As President Obama asks to double the number of U.S. troops fighting ISIS in Iraq and Syria, as Congress finally faces making a decision on whether or not to fund and authorize that U.S. military fight against ISIS, one of the most difficult things about covering ISIS and the fight against them is how difficult and dangerous it is for journalists to get close enough to report on what's going on. Well, now, NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, has become the first American network correspondent to get inside Kobani, uh, the town on the Syrian border that's been under siege by ISIS for months now. Uh, this is remarkable footage and remarkable reporting. Watch this. For two months, Kobani has been fighting for its life, surrounded, withstanding wave after wave of ISIS attacks. We managed to get inside and found a city devastated but refusing to surrender. These Kurdish fighters, women and men, are outgunned and outnumbered. 34-year-old Azima is a top field commander. Her name means strength. Now we run, she says. Sheets hung across intersections cloak our movements from enemy snipers. You stay low and run fast. Azima took us to the southern front. As Kurdish women, she says, we are tied to our land and our principles more than our lives. We follow her to Kobani City Hall, now a frontline position. The enemy is just 20 yards away. She's saying when they come, the ISIS fighters come in waves, not just one or two that try and infiltrate, but 40, 50 fighters will come and try and swarm into the building. To keep them back, the Kurds of Kobani mostly have light weapons and grenades. They are like no other fighting group in Syria, secular nationalists with a classless communal lifestyle. No ranks, everyone part of the war effort. Most women have one home, one family to care for, not us. We care for our nation, Azima says. Half of Kobani has fallen to ISIS. Its defenders are trying to claw it back. Richard Engel, NBC's chief foreign correspondent, filed that dispatch tonight. He is the first American network correspondent to report from Kobani, uh, where fighting, as you see, is ongoing. Just incredible reporting and, unfortunately, very dangerous uh, to get. Richard joins us now live from Urfa, Turkey, which is right near uh, the Syrian border in Turkey. Uh, Richard, thank you so much for being here. What's going to happen in Kobani, best as you can tell, and, and why is it why is it strategically so important? Right now, there is something of a standoff in Kobani. I would say half of the city, uh, as I mentioned in that report, is held by ISIS, the other half by the uh, the Kurdish fighters. And it's very difficult for either side to make advances because this is street to street fighting. Uh, even though there are some U.S. airstrikes, it still takes a lot of skill to and a lot of, uh, of bravery, frankly, to advance, to leave your sniper nest, to take over new positions and to hold them. And from what we could tell, it looks like this could go on for months. Uh, the biggest danger is that the, the Kurdish fighters are going to run out of ammunition. Uh, resupply is enormously difficult. There's mm. been one big resupply uh, by the United States, an airdrop. Uh, some weapons come through Turkey. Uh, Turkey, however, does not uh, freely allow weapons and fighters to go into Kobani. So the, the biggest problem is that uh, like any siege warfare, that they could be starved out. Uh, not necessarily starved out with food, although that is a, is a possibility as well, but mostly starved out uh, with weapons. And if that were to happen, uh, it would be a, a catastrophic loss for the people of Kobani. Uh, they, uh, they, they fear that they would be massacred. They fear that they would... Um, uh, the, the women would be taken away and sold into slavery, like happened to some Yazidi women. Uh, it's one of the reasons they are fighting uh, so hard. Uh, they don't want the same fate to befall Kobani that has uh, befallen other communities in Syria and, and Iraq. Uh, they are also a different uh, group. They are Kurdish nationalist fighters. They are highly experienced. They have years fighting against the Turks, which is one reason that the Turkish uh, military and the Turkish government don't want them to have weapons. Uh, uh, so they're very afraid uh, of losing, and, and I would say at this stage, their biggest uh, fear is probably not being pushed out on the battlefield, but being strangled by the uh, by the closure.
Richard, talking about the, the, the U.S. air supply, the, the airdrop to supply them uh, with ammunition and other supplies, and also the impact of the U.S. and coalition airstrikes, uh, are those making any sort of difference? And from your just tactical judgment having been there, is there more that the coalition could do that would make a difference in the fight for Kobani? Uh, there's quite a bit that the coalition could do. Uh, Turkey would have to cooperate more, uh, and, and I know that it is very frustrating for members of the U.S. military that they can't get more supplies through Turkey, that Turkey doesn't have an, uh, an open-door policy f uh, for them. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there is another U.S. airdrop, uh, perhaps even in the next couple of weeks. Uh, on Kobani because the U.S. wants to help the people of Kobani and is finding it incredibly frustrating that the Turks aren't uh, mm. allowing supplies to go in. Uh, the airstrikes are helping. Uh, the airstrikes are slowing down the ISIS advance, making it more difficult for ISIS to bring in its, uh, it, its own heavy weapons. Uh, if you remember, this, this began a couple of months ago when ISIS decided it was going to make a stand. It was going to take this village right on the Turkish border. It was going to take it in front of everyone's eyes. It was going to raise the black flag right on Turkey's border and say, we are here. We took this village and nothing can stop us. Uh, the people of Kobani decided they weren't going to let that happen. And eventually the U.S. decided it was going to give help to the people of Kobani so that it wouldn't have this very public loss, uh, which would be a morale loss uh, for the entire front against ISIS right in, in, in a very visible place. Even though journalists uh, uh, most journalists haven't been able to get inside Kobani. People have been able to watch what's happened in Kobani through social media and because it's right on the Turkish border. In some places you can stand on hills uh, inside Turkey and see the explosions and see the ISIS f fighters maneuvering uh, just a few hundred yards away. But um, uh, even though the U.S. has decided to help and is carrying out the airstrikes, uh, it, it really is down to the, the fighters on the ground to go street to street, building to building, and, and hold the blocks that they have. And they need weapons that, and they need supplies for that. And eventually, uh, that they will run out. Richard Engel, NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent. Thank you uh, for being with us tonight, Richard. I really appreciate it. And it's just incredible reporting. Uh, I also have to tell you, we're going to have much more of this reporting from Richard this week, specifically on Friday night uh, at 9 o'clock Eastern. Richard's going to have more of this reporting from Kobani and from the wider fight against ISIS. Uh, Richard is right in the middle right now uh, in a way that almost nobody else is or has been. His special Friday night at 9 required viewing. We'll be right back.